Future plans for a vacated WWE title have been revealed. Plus, new WWE titles have also been revealed. And we've had some more Uncle Howdy return cryptic teases. It's all in the Cultaholic Wrestling News right now. So the news came down late last night, just before Raw, that Rhea Ripley, good morning, mother, uh, is forced to vacate uh, her title owing to injury, ending 380 days on top of the women's division. Yeah, big Got old it. bloody shame. It was an incident that happened uh, fair, uh, last week on Raw. I think it was Liv Morgan threw uh, Rhea into a wall and that sort of impact on the shoulder. Something went wrong in the arm area. Something so simple. And, that, and that's always the case with wrestling, isn't it? It's You can do the most complicated of matches, the most complicated of moves, and it can be something really innocuous, like a push into a wall that changes everything. We saw it with CM Punk uh, in AEW when yeah. uh, it was just jumping to the crowd, just completely set wrestling off into a tailspin. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, how he did it. Uh, yeah, so last night uh, there was a lot of speculation going into Raw whether we would see uh, Rhea Ripley hand over her title and we did. Yeah, she, she put it all down on Liv Morgan as well in kayfabe as well as reality, but I guess you can't do it in reality, can you? But in kayfabe it's all down mm. to Liv Morgan and this stupid little revenge tour and Rhea Ripley has vowed that upon her return she's coming for blood. Oh, now, yeah. I've seen a lot of people going like, well, Roman Reigns can go missing for several months at a time and he doesn't have to give up his title. You would assume this is going to be like three to four to five months. Well, uh, according to the Wrestling Observer uh, that came out just before we came into here, uh, it's looking about three months. So it looks like Rhea will be back in time for SummerSlam, but it goes to what you say in the sense that you, we've had champions in the men's division that have gone months uh, uh, AWOL and then just turned up again. Obviously, Rhea Ripley is... The difference with there is that Rhea Ripley is a very uh, crucial part of the on-screen product and if she wasn't there with the Judgment Day, it would be quite obvious that she wasn't there. Mm. Whereas, you know, obviously, it's a slightly different setup with Roman Reigns because it's kind of inbuilt into his character that he just turns up when he wants to. Yeah. Um, but it would have been it would have been a glaring omission if she wasn't there. I'm still gutted. I'm sure that if there had been a workaround, I'm sure WWE would have done a workaround yeah. to get us there. Um, but she uh, she left the belt. Uh, she had a little showdown with uh, Liv Morgan before she left the arena, though, and they were held back by security. One security guard got a sweet little headbutt by Rhea Ripley for his trouble as yeah, well. Yeah, and Liv Morgan is actively leading into the bad reaction she was getting. There was a promo where she got booed audibly while she's doing mm. the backstage promo. You hear a few boos because she's taken out Rhea Ripley. She's depriving us of the mother. And it's the thing is, and, she, and, and the best bad guys have real reasons for doing what they do. And Liv Morgan was like, well, hang on, she injured me and took me out for months. And, mm. you know, where was where was the anger then? So it's it, there's a storyline thread that they can pull on. And they are. Uh, it was announced when it comes to the uh, the vacant women's world title that a new champion will be crowned. And they are wasting no time. We're getting a new champion next week on Raw. No waiting till backlash in France. We're just going to get a new champion next week. It's got to be Liv Morgan, surely. Liv being a deranged heel for a few months and then the babyface mother coming back, maybe in time for SummerSlam. I don't know if that's too soon, but that just seems to write itself there, Tom. It's an half right itself. Yes. Last night, so that ends Rhea Ripley's 380 days on top for Mammy. And there was a video that was shared on Triple H's social, Triple H and Rhea Ripley hugging backstage. Triple H saying, absolutely no doubt in my mind that Rhea Ripley will come back tougher, stronger and more dominant than ever. Thank you, Rhea for a reign that the entire WWE Universe can be proud of. Yeah, it is just a shame, isn't it? Mm. On Cut the plus down side, in a prime. On the plus side, I do think that Wrestling News Now will use that video to go, Rhea Ripley and Triple H have been having, having a affair baby. in WWE. <laughs> <laughs> We're do calling they, it now! Do they even still do that, Wrestling News Now? It's been a while it since I've been on. Exists. I think Roman Reigns' is the latest one is he's been kicked out of the bloodline. You heard it on <laughs> Wrestling News Now, probably. Why are we plugging them? I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, we also had other title-flavoured shenanigans on Raw last night. Wee oui, wee, oui, as they said 50 million times because we have new uh, well, world tag team titles, Strapalicious out with the penny, in with the pound, which is a light and I came up all by myself and it wasn't Richard Tubman next door who said it first <laughs> and I've, he didn't do it all right. But yeah, there's a massive upgrade, Tom. It's oh. obviously shades of the, the, the men's singular world heavyweight title in its design, so I very much like that tie-in. I guess we're going to get, well, I think we're going to get new ones on SmackDown on Friday that maybe look like, maybe a little bit more like Cody's big W. Yeah, it feels like they'll try and replicate. And that's what they've done at like the men's, the women's and the world 
uh, and then tag world belts mm. all have a very similar feel. I think the the same we said for the W ones, which I mean, which means that surely they will all be drafted together. Yeah. I just I don't like the the idea of having a WWE tag title, but then a men's world title and a women's WWE. It messy. Yes. You've got to keep it clean. Move all of them or move none of them. Keep them there, please. I do like them though. It's a nice uh, it's a nice set for our truth and the Miz to hold. Our truth had some fun in the in the reveal as well when Triple H took the uh, the cover off and he went, he's made titles appear on the table. You ain't fooling me, Tommaso Ciampa. <laughs> it was really nice. I liked it a lot. Later in the night, uh, the actual Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano earned the right to face them next week for those new belts, uh, beating the New Day and the Creeds in a triple threat match. Yep. The main event of Raw was all about the Intercontinental title, though. It was, yes. Yeah, Sami Zayn and Chad Gable had a wonderful little wrestling match, so they did. They were just two jam-up guys Sporting endeavour, just two sportsmen doing some sportsman-like things with, with sportsmanship at the fore of everything they did there, Tom. <laughs> it was a wonderful night at the office. They both went home, had a lovely cup of tea, and just ate some Canadian bacon because they were in the Canadia. And that was all that happened, and nothing else did. Uh, Sami Zayn got a hero's welcome coming through Montreal. Uh, and uh, there was a great bit where they had the, oh, what a lovely new era of production we live cinema. in. Cinema. Oh, cinema. Where Sami Zayn is walking through the, uh, through the back, through the, uh, the front of the arena and uh, the camera follows him and it leads him into the actual arena they're playing his music it just looks massive it looked like to me a man who has only seen the first half of uh, Rocky 3 of the whole Rocky trilogy it looked like a Canadian Rocky to me it really looked great didn't it, it not the one with Bullwinkle the, other, the one that does oh, the boxing. That one. Yeah. Uh, I'm not familiar. So <laughs> he's high fiving the fans on the way through, isn't he? Just, they look very, very good. They look brilliant. Uh, Chad Gable came close, but no cigar. He was emotional after losing that match, and Sami Zayn paid tribute to him. He then went ringside, did Sami Zayn, to give his uh, wife and his nearest and dearest a hug. And there's Chad Gable back again. <laughs> Boom. Shoot German from the rear from Chad Gable as he solidified his heel turn in Montreal, the hometown, well, hometown ish of uh, Sami Zayn there. And, uh, and the Raw ended with Chad Gable with an ankle lock on the top rope onto Sami Zayn. That was a fiery ending to it's Raw fantastic, last night. Yeah. I don't know what you need to do. Well, it's, it's simple what you need to do with Chad Gable. Just take any era of Kurt Angle as a heel, whether it be the doofus idiot that was like a big old dirty version in 2001 or the wrestling machine that had the gum shield. Take your pick and just copy it. That's all I would do. That's all you're doing it. <laughs> Talking of eras, how do we feel about uh, the uh, the reimagining, the uh, the OG Sheamus making a return last night? That oh, was unexpected. Very... Yes, he's at the top of the ramp there doing his normal entrance as we've, we've come accustomed to for the past nine years. I think he's had that theme, mm -hmm. you know, the one that dun, 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 with that intro there. Then all of a sudden you're like, what? What's happening here? I can't hear what's going on. And then he makes his way halfway down the ramp and you hear too many limes, too many limes. Lobstead. So they mangle the two together. Deaf rebel deep. Be, be damned, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's it, obviously the it's the old school music. Lobster Head got a big reaction online, as did Seamus himself. Looked like old school Seamus here. Yeah, he with had the sl cross on and the much spikier ginger hair. Yeah, slightly longer tights on, which were lovely shade of green. Mm, and he made uh, relatively quick work of Ivar. Under nine minutes it took for him to beat Ivar with a bro kick, even gave him a lovely white noise off the middle rope, which yeah. I liked as well. And you can tell that Seamus wants to be a bit more of a meat planet because he was noticed not what's the opposite of lean just a bit more thick with two C's on the end it was fantastic mm. he, looked, he looked harder like you, you, you see these refined pretty boys mm. with their six and eight packs and what there Tom Seamus looked like a hard man that's it that's it <laughs> Thick boys are all the rage. Yes, they are. Up the meat planets. Up the meat planets. Um, I, my only issue with this, oh, I love that. It's good to see an, an OG Seamus return. Like, of all, Ivar of all people to be the first opponent, I think because yeah. Ivar's just getting into it with Oberfemi and he left Oberfemi laying last week and mm. then he loses to Seamus here. I just... We have a lot of... Could we have had someone else doing that? If it's just my thought. We could have had someone else doing that. If he's getting spaffed on by Seamus, how the hell is he going to deal with Homer Femi? That's well, all Well, he's going to get spaffed on by Homer Femi as yeah. well. Then he's got two men spaff all over him within the space of two weeks. Well, you don't want to be there, do you? You do not want to be in the middle of a Seamus Homer Femi spaffing. You really, really don't. Uh, we also had last night on Raw uh, a lot of cryptic activity that got us 
I got our gray, our gray matter turning, didn't it? Yes, a new day making their way down the ramp, so they are for last night's Raw, and then we get a QR code appear, which takes you to a picture, which Tom has said uh, has astrology alphabet sign Pluto, <laughs> and a silhouette of a raven, and a man behind casting a shadow of the raven in front mm. of Sir, I don't know. <laughs> so so it, it went the astrology uh, uh, hieroglyphic-esque sign for Pluto, then we had a raven, never more, then we had the QR code, and you scan the QR code, and it takes you to two weird images. Now, I was stood in the mirror. I, didn't, I tried not to look at how to do these. I thought, I'll see if I can figure them out myself. And I was stood in the mirror in the living room with my laptop facing the mirror, going, is it a Im mirrored image? To which point my future wife walks in and goes, what are you doing? She says, shut up, it's wrestling. <laughs> and uh, eventually you, there's, you find out, oh, there's another picture underneath. So you put the pictures on top of each other, make the opacity of the second one about 85% if you're doing PaintShop Pro or Photoshop <laughs> or Paint.net if you're feeling spicy. Uh, and it gives you a WWE.com address to go to you go to that address and it gives you that picture there which is as ross uh, deliciously described uh, a, a silhouette of a raven through a torch and a man looking at it mm. uh, you scroll further down there is a video uh, which looks like an old vhs tape and it says time to wake up take my hand things will be better trust me what could it mean? It doesn't mean Dreadmare. If anyone puts Dreadmare in the <laughs> comments, I'm going to ban you all. <laughs> I feel terrible. A few weeks ago, I, got, I thought Dreadmare was real. I asked on Twitter, what's this Dreadmare about then? And Matthew was like, it's just cosplay, pal. Just cosplay. It's just, and it's a just lovely cosplay. bit of cosplay, but I do get at least one or two messages a week when someone goes, hey, you haven't really mentioned what Bo Dallas is doing on you. It's not Bo Dallas! It's just a bit of fun cosplay. Excellent cosplay, but it's not Bo Dallas. That's why we're not mentioning it. All I'm saying, just a picture of Matt Letizia, please, it just makes you think, doesn't it? What if it is Bo Dallas? What if it is Bo Dallas? Isn't it funny how the weather when we were in lockdown was really hot? <laughs> and now we're not. It's not. <laughs> I sat behind Matt Letizia and arrived at Universal Studios in 2002. Or did you? Well, that's it now. <laughs> He's got me thinking. He's got me thinking. He has. Uh, we uh, That was a jam-packed episode of Raw. It was big, yeah. Lots to drink in. Uh, for those who haven't yet checked it out yet, you broke a record on the Cultaholic podcast on Friday. Yeah, six hours, 58 minutes and 18 seconds, I think it was. <sighs> it didn't feel long. It just felt right. Myself, Jack and Matthew. <laughs> Matthew drank straight rum. And I saw there was a comment that said, Three, 339 minutes in, Jack and Ross finally realised that Matthew's been drinking straight rum. Because he just was sipping away and it's just nonchalant. Yeah. Is he allowed? I hope he's all right. I hope he's not all right. <laughs> but it is a fantastic watch. Yeah. Which shouldn't come out of my mouth, but the comments say it is, so I'll take their word for it, yes. Yeah, it, 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 it's worth taking seven hours out of your day and, so you know, six hours and some change. Well, you can put it on, like, 1.25 speed and shave a quarter off. Do it in, like, oh, three or four sittings. It's lovely. There you go. That's the way YouTube. to do it. Nicely done. So if you missed the Cold Olive Classic Smackdown review this week that myself and Matthew Greg do every single week, I love spending my Saturdays with Math. We couldn't do it this week because your podcast was so girthy. <laughs> but we're back on Saturday, and Math and I talking about old episodes of Smackdown, so come and join us then. Watch Judgment Day 2002, that one where The Undertaker did an awful choke slam on Hulk Hogan. Yeah. <laughs> Great times. And for the latest wrestling news throughout the day, you can check out cultaholic.com. Stay safe. Love you. Bye.